Mr. President, if oh you my care God. about Jewish people as a rabbi, I need you to call for a ceasefire right now. Get out! Get out! Get out! The video you just watched went viral at the beginning of this month, and you probably have already seen it, but if not, that was Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg interrupting President Biden to demand a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, as you heard, the liberals in attendance were hissing and screaming at her, but she did not back down, and that's because she is a courageous, wonderful human being who has dedicated her life to helping others. She serves as rabbinical counsel for Jewish Voice for Peace, and she also organizes with the Jewish Care Network for incarcerated people, and on top of that, she's worked with LGBT GQ plus youth. She's just an all around good person who cares and wants to use her voice for good. Now, since her viral fame, she has met with members of Congress like Ilhan Omar and was even interviewed by CNN about her protest of Biden. But after she went viral for the first time for her courage, she ended up going viral a second time for a completely different reason. For example, stochastic terrorist Chaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok tweeted a screenshot of her interview on CNN writing, man pretending to be a woman also pretends to be a rabbi. She then added and is platformed by a site pretending to be news. Now, Riley Gaines, who became an anti-trans influencer after tying with Leah Thomas for fifth place, also chimed in saying, Sir, Halloween was nearly a month ago. And Stella Escobedo of One American News Network tweeted, quote, Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg, who's actually a biological man, interrupts Biden to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, additionally, Ali London, who literally spent thousands of dollars in plastic surgery to make himself look Korean, joined the dog pile with the picture of her and Ilhan Omar and added Ilhan Omar with trans rabbi Jessica Rosenberg. Caption this. Now, all of these comments are so disgusting. Mocking somebody for being trans is utterly despicable and transphobia, like all forms of bigotry, is utterly detestable and anybody who engages in it is a piece of shit. Trans people are human beings and they belong just like the rest of us. But the woman that they're harassing for being trans isn't even trans. Jessica Rosenberg is a cis woman with polycystic ovary syndrome, and one of the most common features of PCOS is a hormonal imbalance which can lead to high levels of testosterone, which may cause excess facial or body hair. And this is a condition that 5 to 10% of women in the United States have. And Jessica is a queer woman who has made the choice to not shave her facial hair. And I respect that. Not everyone fits perfectly into these gendered parameters established for us by society. I, for one, might look masculine because of my big beard or tattoos, but the second you hear my voice, it's obvious that I'm a flaming homosexual. Now, I could talk like this to come off as more manly, but that would feel really fake and unnatural, so I just choose to be myself. But none of this even matters. Regardless of what we choose and how we choose to express ourselves, it's not of anybody else's business. Jessica chooses to rock her facial hair, and that is her choice and her choice alone. But because of it, smug fuckheads like Megyn Kelly choose to confidently call her a man when they are incredibly wrong. That was, quote, Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg. Jessica is a man pretending to be a woman. And I don't know if she's pretending to be a rabbi, too, but she barely tries to hide the fact that she's a man. She sports a beard. (laughs) <laughs> she's a bearded, she's a bearded lady, lady reconstructionist rabbi. That was embarrassing. The transphobes who claim they can always tell can't actually tell who is and isn't trans. And after transphobes like Megyn Kelly used her large platform to ridicule somebody who she thought was trans and called her a man, well, predictably, all of the followers of these idiots did the same thing. This person misgenders her and says that she would be one of the first people thrown off of a building in Palestine. Hey, I've seen that comment too from liberals and conservatives. Go get some psychiatric help for yourself. Another person says they can't find a single rabbi to support them who isn't mentally ill. This person says Ilhan Omar honored to meet with bearded transvestite, quote, Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg, a proud Minnesotan. And that's just a couple of examples, but you get the point. People are really fucking cruel, but that's no surprise. However, when it comes to transphobes, I think that they might actually be less mature and more cruel than schoolyard bullies in elementary school, because I feel like you could actually explain to a child and they would understand. Whereas when it comes to people like Ty Rychik or Megyn Kelly, these smug dipshits aren't intelligent enough to understand that there are some instances where women might grow facial hair, and it's actually not that uncommon. 
Now, this is by no means the first time that a cis woman has been the victim of transphobic harassment. Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe posted photographs with his fiance, and uh, she was accused by trans investigators of being trans because she's taller than him. And also last year, a cis woman was accused of being trans because of her short hair when she was in a woman's bathroom. But I'm gonna let her tell her story. When I walk in the stall, and sit down um like 30 seconds in i start to hear this lady like ranting and raving about trans people and it and identities and blah 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 and i'm like she's probably talking about me Think about your identity in your bedroom. like when i start recording i am a little confused because i've never had a problem um going to the bathroom since cutting my hair short but um for some reason i knew she was talking about me are you a man or a woman? Why does that matter? Well, because you're in a ladies' room. Okay. And I have gotten called out several times for being in the men's room. Okay. And you're going to be called out for whatever you're doing. So what are you identifying as today? I don't think that's any of your business. Figure out your identity in your bedroom, uh -huh. okay? okay? And then project it on everybody else and we'll accept it. Uh -huh. This is not acceptable. Let's go get security. Yes, let's do that. Um, she's harassing me for being in the bathroom. What's going on? Well, I'm asking her what her identity is. This is my girlfriend. So yes, on woman it's your girlfriend. Yes, so it's yeah, a girl. Have to have doesn't matter. Okay. So the people asking why I didn't tell her what my identity was, it doesn't matter if I'm trans or not. I literally went in there to go to the bathroom, to go pee. So the fact that she followed me into the bathroom thinking that I was a trans child to harass me and bully me out of the stall is unacceptable because I was literally going to the bathroom, minding my business. Yeah, and it's not just cis women because children aren't even safe from the trans investigators. Earlier this year, a nine-year-old girl was accosted at a track meet in Kelowna by a grandparent who accused her of being trans. Quote, a grandfather of a student said, hey, this is supposed to be a girl's event and why are you letting boys compete? My daughter is cisgender, born female, uses she, her pronouns. She has a pixie haircut, said mom, Heidi Starr. So understand that transphobia harms cis people too. And that's not even surprising considering the overly hysterical and paranoid climate that's been cultivated by conservatives like Chaya Rychik and Megyn Kelly. Now, I also want to point out that these same transphobes who are mocking Rabbi Rosenberg also happen to support Israel's genocide in Gaza. So they're a bad person for a number of reasons. But I'm not going to let them distract us from Jessica's core message because what she's saying is important. And her bravery should be commended. So what I want to do is play her interview from CNN where nobody watched it. They just made fun of her appearance because what she said here is really important. She's going to explain why she felt compelled to disrupt Biden's speech to call for a ceasefire. I called for a ceasefire and I continue to call for a ceasefire because we cannot bomb our way to peace. We need a political solution, not a military solution. Palestinians are fighting for equal rights in the land. And as someone who uh, learned from Jewish tradition that all life is sacred, that is what I'm fighting for as well. And that's what I'm calling for a ceasefire. As you know, Rabbi, there are many in the Jewish community dealing with the trauma of the massacre and of course the hostages who have yet to return home. But they're also dealing with anti-Semitic attacks. Perhaps, you know, you have dealt with that as well. We are seeing that just disturbingly across the world. While you're calling for peace, what do you say to people in the Jewish community who are still dealing with all this pain? Well, first of all, we get to grieve. Um, we take all the space and time we need to feel the extreme grief and rage of the violence on October 7th um, and to acknowledge all of what comes up when this happens, which is centuries of anti-Semitism um, and killing Palestinians does not honor or bring back any of the lives of Israelis who were lost on the 7th. And I wanna say, I know there's many non-Jews who believe that supporting Israel in this war mm -hmm. is how to stand in solidarity with Jews or even make repair for the atrocities of the Holocaust. And I wanna say that ending anti-Semitism in all the places that Jews live everywhere, that is how you stand in solidarity with Jews. But Hamas, has and continues to be an existential threat to Israel. 
If your calls for a ceasefire are answered, would you be concerned that that could potentially put more Jewish lives at risk? I'm concerned for Jewish lives and Palestinian lives and all lives and looking towards what is the future we're visioning. It needs to begin with an end to occupation and equal rights for all people in this land. And until we have that, if Hamas is eradicated, a different group will emerge like that. That is when people are living without basic rights. Mm. Uh, that is the fundamental threat to safety in the region. And she is exactly correct. Every single Palestinian killed by Israel has surviving family members that may become radicalized as a result of this violence. So long lasting peace necessitates an end to the cycle of violence that we've seen for decades. That's why Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg is calling for a ceasefire. And at the time that I filmed this, Israel and Hamas have actually agreed to a four day pause in fighting to facilitate the release of 50 Israeli hostages and 150 Palestinian prisoners. And while that's objectively good, the fighting needs to stop. For good it can't just resume after four days it needs to end period and the occupation needs to end as well but in conclusion i wanted jessica's message to be louder than the transphobic vitriol that she's experiencing because what she's saying matters and i think it's important that we all do our best to spread her words far and wide but we'll leave that there Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay